Good morning, everyone. First of all, great thanks to Leonora and to Scott for inviting me to, uh, to talk this morning. We have growing populations, aging populations, healthcare costs are rising. What are we going to do? Because at some stage, governments or insurance companies are just going to run out of money to address this. But it's pretty challenging. You know, the average supply chain is somewhere between one and two years from starting material to packed stock. What does that do? Well, it leads to massive inventories because you have to keep massive inventories to cover that. So as an example, GSK holds 3.8 billion pounds of inventory. And we put a lot of effort into eliminating those failures before the product goes out to the marketplace. In a company like GSK, that costs about a billion pounds a year. So if you think about it as an industry, what we're wasting in terms of inventory, which if we can eliminate at least some of it is a one-off saving, but more importantly, if we can improve our right first time manufacturing, what we can eliminate in terms of waste, which is an annual saving, the numbers are huge. From a batch manufacturing process to continuous manufacturing, it doesn't go to the API, it goes to the penultimate stage of manufacture, but you can look at some of the statistics that that brings in terms of benefit. So a 50% capital reduction in terms of putting that plant in place, 75% reduction in lead time, 86% reduction in that inventory tied up in the working capital reduction, uh, and a 90% footprint reduction. That's one of the opportunities that new technology can bring, and it operates above five sigma. So it takes us from 66,000 thousand failures per million down to around about 200 failures per million and we were all finding the same sorts of problems because we were working in isolation it's working together collaboratively with academic institutions to address some of the fundamental issues that there are in uh, continuous manufacturing and we brought companies from every aspect so there are two tier ones GSK and AstraZeneca there are two institutions Cambridge University and Strathclyde University. And then there are uh, 22 other companies altogether, uh, DHL being a, a recent member to this, where we're working together to address uh, some of the difficulties and the government matches our funding. So for every pound that we spend, the government gives us a pound. It's a UK project, it's focused on enhancing UK manufacturing, but we're a global industry, so it gets transferred everywhere. But we are looking at formulations customized to the patient. We're looking at how we can get distribution and hours. We're looking at smart packs, how we can digitize packs, how we can digitalize manufacturing, uh, and, and solutions that really have the patient in mind. That's what we're aimed at. This is a four-year project that comes to an end in June uh, next year, and it's been very successful. The successes haven't just been in these new products coming forwards, but actually it comes from the sharing of information between all of the partners and thinking about the challenges that we've got and how we can all work uh, to solve them. Randomized clinical trials, how do you make sure that you have enough product in every center to meet whatever patient demand comes along? You have to have quite a lot of overage around to, uh, to meet those demands, but that's a lot of material and it's a pretty high cost at the end of the day. This is working on how do we minimize that by speeding up the way that we uh, pick and pack product uh, and get that out to the clinics. As an industry, we're moving slowly towards more personalized medicines. It's, it's not a huge element at the moment, but it will be in the future. Medicines made for the individual, and that's exactly what we do in clinical trials. So you can look at commercial manufacture in the future as being very similar to what we're seeing in clinical trials at the moment. When you've got a huge physical infrastructure as we have in the pharma industry, it's quite often difficult to convince people of the business cases uh, that exist for moving to new technology. We're moving perhaps away from blockbusters to smaller, more niche products. And of course, continuous manufacturing is ideal for that. It's also ideal for distributed manufacturing. So you don't have to manufacture in the center and shift everything. Uh, you can move it out into individual countries. And we're currently engaged with uh, uh, the UK government and the Scottish government in creating a medicines manufacturing innovation center. So this would be a GMP manufacturing facility 
where companies could come along and try their molecules in the new technology uh, and see if they could prove their concept of use and therefore de-risk their uh, investment. The National Health Service bill in the UK is about 20 billion pounds a year and we think that this could uh, have a significant impact from a manufacturing perspective on that bill and therefore it's good for the governments. So how do we get products to patients faster, reliably, with the best quality and with the lowest cost? And that's what the new technologies are all aimed at. So thank you very much. This